Hey everyone, Techni here. Now real quick before we get started in this video, I want to apologize for my current setup. A lot of you guys already know that I'm in the process of moving. I am in a new home right now, but it is not set up. I'm sure you can hear this crazy echo because I have nothing on the walls here. My gear pictures are actually sitting right over here. As you can see, my walls like this off-white ivory. So anyways, we have some painters coming here uh, drawing us up an estimate and stuff. So I have a lot of work to do around here, but still, I wanted to get with you guys and share some awesome products with you. And what we have today is the G Wolves Skull Gaming Mouse. Let me show you this mouse real quick. So what did you all think about the close-ups right there? My honest opinion, straight out the box, first time in the hand, what I honestly thought was that recent mouse we just reviewed, the Zowie EC2B. I mean, exactly like it as far as shape and everything. Like, almost a, let me show you something. You see what I mean now? Isn't it crazy how similar they are? As far as shape, it's almost like a spitting image. Sure, the side buttons are different and everything, but as far as the grooves where your fingers roll and everything, they're almost an exact spitting image. All right, now before we start talking about the mouse, I have to show you the packaging. I mean, this thing's just awesome. Number one, the outside packaging is just this solid, solid box right here. Let's go and pop that out first. And again, it's just... It's a very nice, solid packaging, right? But catch this. So we'll take that out. Look at this. Yeah, this little tin. I mean, holy smokes, this is just crazy. So we got a bunch of stuff, and whoop, there we go. But as you can see, it's a metal tin that's within the heavy duty box here. I mean, come on, we got to win already, right? In here, they give you a little uh, thank you note saying from gamer to gamer, if you have any issues, contact us. Really, really cool right there. They give you this little postcard, which was on your tin. And then they showed this back here, which I'm not sure if that's some different design tins you can get or whatever. I've watched a few unboxing, and the only tin I've ever seen is this one. But anyways, you get that little card right there. Over here, they give you a package, and it all has, a, I don't know, is this Chinese or something uh, writing on it? But inside, what you're going to get, whoopsie, there we go, some alcohol pads. They give you a whole bunch of feet. And the crazy thing about these feet, actually, as you can see them right in the package, you have that bottom right up there. And then on the back side, you have your regular feet. I'm jumping ahead of myself here right now. But as you can see, you have the bottom foot there and then the small feet. Now, they give you that foot for right up here, but it's kind of weird. It's not placed on there. It's in here. So I don't know. Is this like how they're reducing the weight by keeping this stuff off and giving you the option to put it on? I don't know. Does it perform better with it on? I didn't try it because I left it at the weight, and honestly, it performed perfectly fine just like this. But it's kind of cool that they give you the options to try the stuff out right here, and I'm sure one little foot's not going to increase the weight in massive amount. And the other thing you get in the package as well is that sticker that goes on the bottom of the mouse right here. As you can see right down here, they do not have it on, but they give you right here, and it has your serial number, then a DPI, and RGB, and then some branding on it and everything. So again, my kind of thought here is like, okay, they're keeping the weight down by keeping these things off. Like I said, the extra pad right there, the sticker right here and stuff. I don't know. I mean, half of my mice, I usually keep, tear the sticker off anyways because it's always peeling up on one edge. So I guess it's kind of cool that they give you the option, hey, set this mouse up how you want. So as far as packaging, all I can say is wow. I mean, this is just like, holy smokes, this is above and beyond right here. I mean, I mean, this is just the best packaging I've seen for a mouse, if not some of the products I've ever seen, you know? I mean, it's totally awesome. But again, we're not buying a package here. We're buying a mouse. So let's go on and get talking about the mouse. All right, now, my AC just turned on and I have the return vent right at my door here. Again, guys, I'm just in my new house. First video in a new house. I'm not even set up yet. I just wanted to share this awesome product with you guys. But uh, I'm going to have to weed out some of these technical issues here and kind of figure this out. So uh, again, please just bear with me and I do apologize. All right, so anyways, as far as the mouse, it's 125 millimeters long, 68 millimeters wide, and 42 millimeters tall right there. Again, we're almost spot on with the EC2B, kind of in between the uh, the 1 and the 2 right there. So it's it's honestly, again, back to that comfort and the feel and the shape, it is super duper cozy. And talking about that comfort, 
This mouse is so lightweight. Coming in right at 66 grams on my scale, and you honestly feel it. It's so nice because most lightweight mice that we've seen on the shelf these days have had that ambi shape, right? Where they kind of swoop in. When this guy really has that nice palm grip shape right there. The first one I have seen yet. Again, most of them have that ambi shape, which I really like for first person shooters, but it's nice to have this really solid palm grip shape in this lightweight design. And again, coming in at 66 grams right there, it is just so nice. I mean, it just glides right across your table right there. Comes with a paracord on it, and it's nice because this little cord right here, is, again, is so lightweight, but it's not baggy or anything. It's just, I mean, you can just catch it right here. Like, it doesn't budge, it doesn't move. It's just, I mean, I really, really like it. It feels, again, just like you're using a wireless mouse. All right, now, as far as the buttons on this guy, as you can see right up here on the finger, you have little finger grooves right there. Again, just like the EC2P, it's a spitting image, honestly, and it's very, very cozy. The scroll wheel seems a little bit big to me whenever I'm using it. It's not bad by any means, but again, it just feels uh, slightly big. Your side buttons are right over here, very nicely placed, very clicky. Let me give you a quick sound test, actually. All right, so as far as that sound test, I'm not sure if you guys caught it right there. Let me pull you in and show you this here one more time. So we're gonna click, let's see. So watch the gap. So I click, you see how much gap I still have left? Click gap, right? So you guys follow me there? Let's see if you can see on this one. So there's a lot of travel after that click, which kind of threw me off a little bit in my games. Because again, even when I use a controller or a mouse or anything, I kind of press the button all the way down. I just don't just wait for the click. I just go through the uh, straight press. Like I kind of compare it a little bit to my, uh, I use Cherry MX Red as my preferred switch, right? And I press that switch all the way down. And I just don't just wait for that uh, clicky sound. Obviously, Reds don't have clicky sound. <laughs> but anyways, that's just what I'm used to. Again, kind of like that controller feel where I press that button all the way down. And that's what I get with this guy. Like I press it and then I have so much travel after that uh, uh, click right there that it's almost kind of throws me off a little bit because again after that click to press it down it gets a little bit firm right there. It's not deal break or anything like that but again right off the bat out of the box I didn't notice it after using it for a while it just kind of went away but I wanted to kind of point that out to you right there. Now as far as the buttons on the bottom of the mouse as we saw in that sticker that came in the box it tells us what they are but again we don't have it on here but anyways this one right over here will be your DPI and this guy will be your RGB and I showed you how you can cycle through those RGBs in the close-ups I showed a few of them right there but you can adjust all this within the software. Let's take a look. All right, so as you can see, we're in the G-Wolf software right now. Now, right up top here, you can set up different profiles, create new ones, delete them or whatever, and it starts you off right into the lighting right here. Now, first, you have your brightness, and I really like whatever you adjust, it shows you on the mouse right here, whether if you have an effect or anything, you adjust your speed, and it'll show how it's going to change and how it's going to look on your mouse right there. Again, even with brightness, I just keep mine on a static right here. And again, it's just cool how it shows you the difference right there. Now, as far as these sliders, they don't just glide across. As you can see, I'm jumping into different increments right there. So you have pretty much those points of adjustment. You can adjust your color here, pick a custom color if you'd like. And then again, you have all those effects right there. Right down here to customize, you can customize your buttons. Click right there and choose what you want the button to do. Bam and apply. Then you have your DPI. And this is one thing I might not have uh, liked right here. As you can see, you have seven DPI selections, and you can't disable them. So whatever you cycle the DPI, it's all going to be right there. So I don't know, maybe set them all on the one number you use. I had, as you see, I turned mine down thing, it would disable them, but it wouldn't. It stops right there at 200. Your DPI adjustment increments of 100. And as you can see, it's pretty tough to get it to move right between that, because it doesn't just slide. It kind of jumps to each, each different one right there. So again, I kind of wish I could disable these, because all of my mice, I just leave one active. But anyways, it always uses those active right there. All right, all right, all right. Now, I know this mouse is sounding too good to be true right now, right? But there are two things that really threw me off of this mouse. And I think it goes for that lightweight design, this honeycomb design that we're seeing in a lot of mice coming out. Or just lightweight in general. We noticed they have uh, some flex here and there on the mouse. The Model O, I had a really bad issue with the side button press right there. You know what I mean? In this mouse, what I'd like to point out, as you can see the little RGB strip right there. Now, you got the bottom. RGB strip and then top and it's three different pieces as you can see the RGB strip is just fit right in there I don't know how well the camera can actually pick it up the separation of the two But anyways as you see black red black right there It's all three different pieces and whenever I was playing and this goes for both sides right over here on the inside and on the outside Slight like even right now when I just go like that a slight amount 
you feel like this slight creak, like it's just going in, just an absolute tiny, tiny smidge. I'm talking minimal, incredibly small amount. It's not this massive amount where it's just mushing in your hand or anything, but it just kind of annoyed me whenever I was in game. You know, I'm going on, and I just kind of feel this little creak in there, you know, and I feel it just go in a little bit. Again, it's not bad. I'm not saying it's falling apart. It's not registering any buttons or anything like that. But it just annoyed me a little bit, feeling that little bit go in right there, even when I'm just going here like this. And again, you can't see it in the camera. I tried getting some, so you won't even focus on it. But it's so mild in there. And you can see it sticking out. Like in person right here, you can see it sticking out and going in. No, it doesn't register anything or anything like that. But again, to me, that little bit just got annoying. And again, it's on the inside and the outside. Now, the one other thing that really bugged me about this mouse, and this may be personal preference. I'm quite a gripper when I get onto my mouse. I play a lot of Battlefield, Call of Duty, uh, been getting back into Destiny 2 and stuff, and I get into my mouse and get going at it and everything, you know what I mean? So I start gripping quite firm. And on the inside right here, I don't know how well you guys can pick it, but let's like, look at the top first. You got your regular standard honeycomb there, right? A little bit bigger than most. Then we come to the side and they start stretching out a little bit. As you can see, the honeycomb stretches out on the side if you're catching my drift. And what that did to me, so anyways, I'm gripping, I'm getting my palm grip here, right? And when I start pressing on the side right up front here, let's see if we can get it. So I start gripping and everything, and you can see the indentions in my thumb right there. I think, my personal opinion, with the honeycomb being a little bigger and stretched out like that, I think that's why it's really kind of, my thumb is sinking into it right there. I feel like if the honeycomb was a little bit smaller, I wouldn't notice it at all. But with them being that big, again, my finger kind of, you know, sinks into it, my thumb right there. And then when I'm gaming and everything, just put all the pressure on right there. And let me tell you what, my thumb is starting to hurt. So that could just be me. You know, maybe I'm just an aggressive gripper on my mouse or anything, but if you are as well, just keep that in mind because again, it is noticeable and it started annoying my thumb after a while. I wish that was just flat right there and we might almost have perfection. Now, one other thing I want to point out, this is not a negative or anything bad. I just kind of want to bring it to your attention and show you again, going as far as the build. As you see, we got the honeycomb there, honeycomb in the bottom. I don't know how well you guys would pick this up, but let me show you right here. And if you press, yes, yeah, you can't pick it up. But anyways, when I press on the bottom, you might be able to see right here. Can we see it? There we go. You can see it going in a little bit. I'm barely pressing. I'm not pressing very hard. Yeah, I'm giving a little bit of force, but not much at all. And it does go in at the bottom right there. None towards the front. It's really just the bottom right here and the back part that when you press it, it goes in. It doesn't feel cheap or feel like it's going to break by any means, you know? You know, we got to sacrifice something to get it to this light weight. But again, the bottom back right there feels very flimsy. All right. So all in all, where do I place the G Wolf Skull Gaming Mouse? I place it up top as a win as far as a lightweight gaming mouse. I really like it. Again, it's the first one with that nice palm grip uh, shape I've seen yet. Really, really nice. I've been using this one a little bit more for like first person shooter story games and using that ambi type shape for first person multiplayer games. Kind of get in there quick and everything. But again, having this nice lightweight right there, I really like it. I mean, the shape just like the EC2B that we recently reviewed. And you all know I love that one right there. Uh, the buttons are better on this than that one, by the way. Uh, again, I think it's a complete package here. Speaking of packaging, you're not going to find a mouse with better packaging. I mean, this is just stinking awesome right here. But again, sure, the price is a little steep. You're talking 75 bucks right there, but I feel like you're getting your money's worth. But hey, let me know down in the comments, do you use a G Wheel Skull and what do you think about it? Do you have those little flex points that I had on this one right here? I'm really curious, so please do let me know down in the comments. And are you looking at picking this up and giving it a shot? And if you do, please let me know, because again, I'm really curious to hear what you think, because it is such a unique and really cool, fun mouse to use. And again, I do truly apologize for my setup right now. It'll probably take me a little while to get it completely set up, get it repainted, get some pictures hung up and get my sound a little bit better here right now but again I just I just been jonesing to make a video I just wanted to make a video I'm sorry if my quality is bad I promise I'll get it back but again hey I want to share these products with you and make these videos but hey thank you so much for stopping by and watch this one I highly appreciate it if you enjoyed it hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for some future tech videos hey I hope I catch you in the next one bye now